Hey guys, thanks for watching. Um, so we've done two videos on this already. One on how to make it, and another on why to make it. We haven't actually done a full functionality systems test yet. And a lot of people have expressed a lot of skepticism on how many miles you can actually get out of this system, and rightfully so. So what we're gonna do today is a full kind of functionality system stress test. Um, we're out here, I guess on set, you would call it, uh, at the GameStop. Uh, I'm gonna go in there and play some games while this is running, but this is kind of a, ideally where the system would be used at, which is in like a work parking lot or somewhere you have to be parked for a while, but you don't have access to an outlet. Um, so if you come to the back, Normally I only have this thing running for about 15 minutes every hour and that balances out the charge you have coming in and going out and it gives all the electronics a chance to cool down for 45 minutes an hour. Um, since we're going to be running this straight for 90 minutes, because that video camera doesn't have a 12 hour battery on it, um, it's going to get, thermal regulation is going to become an issue almost immediately. So I've hooked some little USB fans into our, uh, our USB port here on the inverter and that's going to help kind of keep it cool. I'm going to crack the windows. I've got uh, some tin on the back to help keep it cool and these visors so I can, at work I can leave it cracked and you know rain or uh, whatever won't get inside the vehicle. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on. I get my green light. My charger comes on. I'm going to hook the, uh, I've got the kilowatt meter running on it. so that I can keep track of how many kilowatts I get out of this thing while it's running. And um, that's it, let's close it up. Check out the mileage so we know what we're at both before and after the test. Nine miles. So I'll set it up on stand here, start the stopwatch. I'll be running some periodic tests back there uh, to check on the voltage drop of the system and the heat throughout it, but there we go. 90 minute test starts now. All right, so as you can see from the shadow at the bottom of the car, um, I, I got some good sunlight for the test. It was partly cloudy, it was blowing in and out. Um, while it was getting a lot of cloud cover for most of the time, the I was actually pretty happy with the uh, the kilowatt input that we got throughout the course of the <laughs> test. And if you see the timer shaking there, um, yes, that is a kitchen timer that has been taped to a rake that I set a brick on. So if you ever doubt that this project was done on a very low budget, uh, that is all the proof you'll ever, <laughs> ever need right there. Okay guys, we are at 45 minutes and counting. It's been a, a little cloudy, so we're not getting, you know, the best sun right now. We've still got our blue charging light beeping on the dash there. If you can see that. There we go. Let's go check out the back and see how that looks. All right, where we at? Putting out 1,400 watts, that's perfect. That's right where we're supposed to be. We're at 1.2 kilowatt hours in 45 minutes, so that looks good too. The temperature is right around 101. All the little fans are doing good, blowing nice cool air over our inverter. It's not too hot, so even running for 45 minutes straight, it's doing all right. Close the back up and let it keep going.
All right, so that's 90 minutes of straight running. Um, like I said, normally I would spread this out, bounce it out. That I'd probably disperse that much charging over five hours, but I don't have a camera that'll compress five hours into that, so we'll just run it in 90 minutes. To pack up the equipment, check on the uh, temperature in the back and see how our inverter held up. What we would really want, ideally, would be some kind of micro AC unit. I know there's a company called Zero Breeze that makes something that goes into a real small area. Um, I think Trip Light has a small AC unit. If I can find a way to get more battery capacity back there and more panels on the car, having an actual passive climate control running inside the vehicle is something you'd be able to do and that would be really cool because it would mean you would never get into a car that was 130 degrees again. Go. What do we got? One oh eight. So yeah, she was cooking back there. Forty two point five degrees C. Shut off the inverter. Obviously, normally I would not advise keeping bottles of water around electronics, but that's what I had to do to help keep it cool to push it this hard. Let's go see how many miles we got on it. Gonna shift it into eco mode, which is how we drive it. From 9 to 19. So we just crammed uh, 10 miles on there in an hour and a half. Um, so I don't know exactly how much I could do in a day. I'll keep um, I'll keep running tests like this and posting more data. Let's run to the back and take a look at that. Oh man, I forgot to look at the, uh, the kilowatt meter before I shut the power off. But yeah, I'll go back on the video and look. It should be on there. And we can get a reading of exactly how many uh, kilowatts were put through there. And one of the really cool things... Uh, let's see, one of the really cool things about the Renogy MPPT is I can actually go down to history and look at today, zero days ago, enter, and max charging power. So we hit a maximum of 255 watts. That's pretty good. And it says 0 .244. Okay, so that's our... um. Also, how many kilowatts we were able to put in using just the panels just in this hour and a half. We hit a quarter of a kilowatt. So I'll crunch some numbers later and see what that wind up to at being an entire day. But uh, hopefully this lends a little bit of legitimate, legitimacy to the system in the eyes of the more, um, uh, more skeptical of the viewers. Uh, thank you very much and catch me next time for another video on how to update and improve this.